Starting with the remarkable pen, you will see that it is a very simplistic design with a very high grit sandpaper type of feel on it. It is a stone texture, grey. It's very nice with a black tip. The tips are removable of course and this doesn't have any secondary tertiary buttons or even an eraser on it. But it is extremely nice to hold and it does have a very strong magnet that it snaps not only to the side of the device but basically on any single part of the device as you can see right here. Much like the first Remarkable, the Remarkable 2 does not have a home screen. The home screen basically is the list of whatever you have here. So it'll be stock on my files and if you click here on the top you get notebooks, PDFs, ebooks, favorite and you can even look at them in a grid format or a list format respectively. You have trash, things you've deleted and you have settings. Settings are where you're going to find all of your device settings, your account, Wi-Fi, power, etc. You also have handwriting conversion in which you can actually choose what language you write in and it will convert into text what you have written on the screen. You do have some different keyboards you can choose as well, some accessibility options for right-handed and left-handed mode, and some various device updates, flight mode, power off, etc. On your home screen, there's a couple things you can do with My Files. Once you're done writing on a notepad, you can actually long press it and you do have many options. You can delete it, you can duplicate it, move it, rename it, or favorite, or most interestingly, you can send. This is where you can send via email, you can add a message, set the file name, and you can actually choose the exported format be it PDF, PNG, or SVG. This is all very nice because everything that you've written, everything that you've drawn, you can export and email to yourself very safely. This has the most extensive note-taking capabilities and functions of any other note-taking device on the market currently. You have a plethora of pens, pen, fine liner, marker, pencil. Each thing does something different when it comes to the pressure sensitivity, if you can tilt, if you can scribble, if you can shade like that. They also have mechanical pencil so your line is consistent. Paintbrush so you can really get into those strokes, heavy bleeds, fine lines. And they have highlighter which allows you to highlight over things with a high level of transparency. You also have line thicknesses, thin, medium, and thick, and you actually have some colors, black, gray, and white. Gray will be a mid-range transparency, black will be fully black, and white is basically like using the eraser. Because the stock pen doesn't have an eraser, you'll have to use the white color in order to accomplish that. Again, it doesn't have an eraser, so you have to use the software-driven elements, be it the eraser function, Erase selection, where you can isolate a certain range, or erase all. Once you've drawn something, you can use the area select tool. Once you circle that, you can actually expand it, contract it, and all of this happens in its own little faux A2 mode. And although there is no system-wide A2 mode, you do get this A2 mode when you move things around. You can rotate as well, and you can copy. You can also stamp where you want it to go like that, or you can cut it entirely and it goes away. You do have things saved to the clipboard, however, too, or you can just clear the clipboard and it goes away like that. Because this doesn't have the pinch and zoom ability, you will have to use the zoom magnifying glass. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, or you can choose zoom selection, in which case you can isolate a certain range and go in several hundred percent, make your fine line details like that, and you can zoom out back to normal, and what you are left with is very high level details that you couldn't really achieve without zooming into that level. If you do make a mistake, they do allow you to go back, and they allow you to go forward as well. 
The functionality doesn't stop there with the Remarkable because they've introduced layers, and this was on the Remarkable one as well, but it's never felt better to write with the Remarkable, and using layers is fantastic. If you add a layer, you are now on layer 2. So for example, if we go down to the highlighter, and we highlight over that, and then we use the marker, and we scribble over that, it's looking like you've messed everything up and there's no turning back. What you are actually doing is you're only affecting the layer you're working on. Once that goes away, you're not affecting the layer down below. You can move them up and down respectively or delete them entirely. This is great because it gives you that Photoshop level of software editing on the go. Quite possibly one of the biggest draws of this device in the note taking area, aside from layers and all the different pens, is handwriting recognition. So we can go down here to convert to text and send. So let's write something up and show you how it works. Once you're done that, click over here, convert to text and send, and you will see that everything you have written has not only turned into text, but accurately turned into text. From there, you can actually send via an email to any email address you want, set the subject line, and your handwriting has been converted into text and sent to you via email. The device does run ebooks as well, so you can open up ebooks that you have transferred over to the device, and you can see that the ebooks run and display themselves very nicely. Now, this isn't an ebook reader first and foremost, and the functionality is basically non existent, but you do have the ability to write on the ebook, which very few devices actually allow you to do. Actually, the pocketbook even allows you to do this, which is quite amazing. So, the Remarkable does give you that sidebar, whether you're in an ebook, a PDF, or you're in the note taking application, much like the Sony and the Fujitsu do. So, they blanket the UI element over all of the different applications that this runs. Although transferring files to Remarkable is extremely tedious and requires PC software, the web browser open, and your Remarkable open all at the exact same time just to transfer files, once the files are on here, they work beautifully. They turn pages really quickly, you can draw right away on all of the content you can see right there. And the beauty of this is that because they blanket all of the UI elements as we've said before, even on side loaded PDFs you have all the ability to do all the note taking you want. So this is very nice that they don't have a different experience for each individual application. It's very familiar across the entire board. The Remarkable 2's writing experience feel is one of the best. It's definitely not the best we felt. It is a little bit glossier than previous devices we've reviewed in the past, but it's definitely better than those glass based displays that a few manufacturers are using. You want that texture, you want that roughness when the pen hits the actual page or the display so to speak. The Remarkable 2 is basically that. It's remarkable. It does everything you're going to want in a note taking device device and more. It's also the world's thinnest tablet and it's built beautifully. There's nothing at all wrong with this device for what it's intended to do. You don't have the ability to install apps and watch videos and all those things, but this is a single purpose device and it is one of the best. If you guys want to see more on this, stay tuned to youtube.com slash goodyreader and for a full review of the Remarkable 2, this is Peter.